Good running today. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the 5 May 2014 Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting, the town of Hampton. Roman 1 public comment period. Is there anybody that wishes to make any public comment this evening? And seeing none, Roman 2 announcements and community calendar. Select Modell. Um, on Tuesday, tomorrow, May 6th, there will be a job fair at the Seabrook Recreation Center. About 58 companies on Lafayette Road just before the uh, Walmart. Uh, t 10 to 2. And also on Thursday, May 8th at the Marston School, the presentation of the proposed <coughs> FEMA flood maps. It's for public officials, but the public is welcome and can attend. Uh, Nancy Stiles double check that, and the public can, uh, oh. can attend. You know, they're not going to be asking questions or anything, but it is open to the public. So that's Thursday, May 8th at the Marston School. Um, and what time is that? 6 that's 6 30. Thank you, sir. Wilson. <coughs> this is just kind of an announcement. Um, I'm trying to, Fred, do you remember the guy that was the clerk of the works down at the beach? Uh, Dick was his first name. Uh, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Dick Violet. Violet, yeah. Violet yeah. that's it, yes. His uh, son uh, is a horse trainer, and he had a horse in the Kentucky Derby um, on Saturday. Really? It led almost all the way around. Uh, called Sam Samset, I think, means emperor in Indian. But uh, with that race coming in, it did fade to fifth at the end, and it's a, it has won over, in its six races, has won over a million dollars. So I, that's a nice accomplishment. Oh, that's nice. I guess so. He's, he races the New York circuit. Oh, wow. Good. Cool. Mm. Well done. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Saturday, May 10th is the National Association of Letter Carriers Food Drive. Uh, Last year they collected over 6,000 pounds of non-perishable food and toiletry items that <coughs> stayed right here in Hampton. Six. So um, they would appreciate it that if you'd help them out and put the food items in your, there, your mailbox on Saturday and they go around and pick them up uh, and it all stays right here in Hampton. The second is uh, we had the passing this uh, this week of Ada Merrill. Ada was a mm -hmm. longtime Hampton resident, yeah. um, and uh, family has has been in this town a long time and does a lot of things. And uh, I'd just like to have a moment of silence for Ada. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Comment? No, sir. Thank you. And just on uh, uh, the passing of Ada Merrill, and there there seems to be too many of these uh, these yeah. passings uh, lately. And uh, what a tremendous public servant this woman was in her own right, uh, a tremendous matriarch, uh, a business owner, uh, and of course with Toby and Merrill and uh, uh, Rusty, thank you for those comments. What a beautiful sight it was seeing her ride around in her convertible. Yes, it was. <laughs> she will be missed. Yes, she will. Wonderful. Thank you. Roman 3, uh, in a slight change of format, uh, because oftentimes uh, in the past we had been sitting around a selectman unsupervised signing uh, <laughs> documents and perhaps talking uh, out of school. So now, the, uh, as there is no dearth of signature requirements, uh, we'll conduct that during the meeting so we can uh, leave the building as soon as the meeting uh, ceases. And so uh, Roman 3 is the consent agenda. A motion, please. Also move. Second. And uh, Mr. Bridal. Yes. Uh, please. Number one is uh, requalification of the elderly tax exemptions. There are seven. Seven. Uh, number two is disabled tax one. exemption requalification. There is one. 2013 abatements. There are six. Six. And the <laughs> <laughs> they're doing good. And parade and public gathering licenses. There is uh, the New Hampshire Tow Association Tow and Trade Show on 518-14. There's a, smut, a Smutty Nose 5K race, which is on 622-14, and the Granite State Quest for 712-14. And then we have one entertainment license for the Sea Catch 127 Ocean Boulevard. And all those in favor? All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, 
Roman four appointments number one Ellen Lavin town treasurer a on the tax anticipation note for four million dollars B for the tax anticipation note line of credit writer and C closing certificates yes ma'am good evening good evening I am here tonight uh, I'm going to borrow or not borrow I have a line of credit Provident Bank that we borrow as needed last year we had about the same amount of money yeah, we borrowed one million in June, and then we pay it back in July. We have a shortage of cash in that last month of the first annual tax billing. I have a tax anticipation note rider, which says I, I draw as needed, and then the interest is charged. <coughs> we also have an I have two of those that need to be signed. I have a one note, which is. Uh, signed only one and then we have a certificate saying that you are allowed to borrow so I need all of those signed and then I send them back to uh, bond council and then when we do need the money I will call up Provident and we borrow it so that's what I need from you tonight thank you ma'am uh, questions from the board no oh, thank you I'm prepared to make a motion to authorize the treasurer to uh, Pursue the tax anticipation note of four million dollars. Second. I'll second it. Great. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. I can just one note and the other two are in Do you need a, a motion on the tax anticipation note line of credit and the certificate? Or, or is this all one? I'll let Mary Louise Chuck. sign first and then we'll pass. Okay. Uh, Ellen, you said just signed. one vote and signatures for the free, right? Yes. Right. Yep. No, okay. that's a negative. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Interest rate is 2.5. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that. Good. Did you have to go do my mortgage? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are different yours. Yes, they are. That's all the way over to them. Rusty, you've got Rick, you've got Mary Louise, so it's Mr. Waddell. Actually, you just need Rick on that one that's, that he didn't finish right there. Oh. Oh. I didn't print. That's what you need. He signed where he printed. Yeah. I always do that. Can I print on this side? Well, you yeah, signed. So. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are you all set, Ellen? I think I am. It's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Roman 4, number 2, Michael Swotzer, Finance Director on the March Financial. Sir. Good evening. I can't believe it's May and I'm going to be talking about March. <laughs> Time just flies by. And that literally is what I'm here to talk about is the March income expense statements. I will be working on the April statements starting this week. Um, hopefully they will be ready by the end of the week or if the latest uh, next Monday. I will get them to the board, put them up on the web, and then we do have an appointment, um, I believe, on the 19th. March is the third month, uh, therefore it's the end of the first quarter and the expenditure target is 25%. Total income was 389000 Of that, motor vehicles came in at $296.8,000, which I believe is a new one-month record. Uh, the lines just did not stop. It was unbelievable. We're now $22,000 above budget, which is a plus 0.8% <laughs> on a year-to-date basis in regards to the motor vehicles. Other major contributors were interest on taxes 26.7, building permits at 12.4, departmental at 13.5, real estate trust at 36.7. Expenses. At the end of March, the operating department, without the debt service but with open POs, was 24.5% of the month, <coughs> which is lower by $113,000 than the month's 25% target. Um, my, favorite, my favorite place, finance. 6.4 was spent in <coughs> finance supplies and expenses, but that actually contained the cost of the annual report at almost $5,000. So that's why there's such a large expenditure in that one line for that one time frame. Uh, MIS, the staff development cost of $3,000 is for an annual subscription mm -hmm. to an online course for the computer tech. Um, he will become, he's working on certifications in multiple um, Microsoft products, and we believe that this is going to turn into a very um, wise investment. Mm. Municipal insurance, the health insurance is on target at 25.03%. Since this is the majority of that section expense, it's a very good sign for the year. Police department, 196 overall when the open POs are included. Two accounts in the support services, which is the PT, part-time special officers, and the summer coverage full-time have a combined budget of $395,000, of which only $12,000 has been spent. Uh, and that accounts for 2.5% of the department's favorable variance. Once again, we have seasonal uh, impacts. Uh, police is one of them that has the large jump in the summertime. <coughs> Fire department, 22.5% when the open POs are included. Um, I have made a note earlier in prior months about the accounts for the electric heating, fuel, and water, and we're being reviewed in regards to the new buildings versus the older stations. Highways and streets is over target by one and a half percent. This is once again, this is we're talking about March. This is primarily primarily due to the snow and ice removal costs, five per, five budget points uh, percentage points <coughs> uh, by that alone. Uh, being almost fully expended during the first part of the year. Also, admin OT, overtime wages, is running $8,000 ahead of the same time last year at 14.7. Municipal sanitation, slightly below budget. Uh, even when the $136,000 annual, and that's annual PO for chemicals, is used in the calculation. So that should inflate it, but they're still running below. Uh, majority of the warrant articles. Um, uh, for the social services have been received and uh, their requested funds have been processed as we have done in the past the ones that are over ten thousand dollars we split in half and first half goes out and then the second half will go out in September is automatically at the bottom of page 15 the accounting of the encumbrances showing that 37 percent has been expended to date now the majority of the remaining 211,000 consists of the following the I and I study at forty-five thousand. Yeah. That's long term. The codification project at twenty thousand. I know that's in process. Long term. Part-time special officers' equipment twenty-two thousand dollars. That will be taken care of later this summer. Engineering relating to Exeter or High Street, a hundred and one thousand dollars. So these projects are long term and they will be cleared later in the year. So the, the smaller stuff 
that was the ongoing normal, those have, those have gone. But we have these large projects. So therefore, we still show that we have 63% 60, open, but they're big projects and it will take a time to clear it. Um, Fund 24 Recreation, beach sticker donations year to date, $4,500 of which $140 of this has been granted as scholarships. I saw this month we do have more monies being uh, given out as scholarships and that will be reflected in next month's report. Cable Committee has received the first quarterly payment of the franchise fee revenue, 18.6, and this exceeds the first three months expenditures, which is 15.2, resulting in the current fund balance remaining above last year's ending, ending total. Private detail activity is relatively, that income and expense is minimal at time of the year, but if you've been out on the roads, you're seeing more uh, electrical crews out, the tree crews out, so our guys are out. EMS, once again, the ambulance, this is a reminder, the ambulance revenue always lags at least a month behind, <coughs> which accounts for the negligible growth in the account balance. This is March. April will be worked on and out to you relatively quickly. I do apologize for the delay, and sometimes um, I just needed a time off to <coughs> take care of myself. Is there any questions? Thank you, Director. Selectman Wilson. No, I think fine job. Thank you. Okay. Selectman Griffin. No questions. Thank you. All set. Thank you. As always. Set, I, I one question. I don't know if it's a hypothetic, too hypothetical sure. or not. Go ahead. With the, uh, the the court ruling on the pension, if, if they were to win that and, and you have to refund, would that how would that have a dramatic effect on the town? I'm actually not, uh, I have not kept up with the, the court ruling in regard to the pension. 15th, the Supreme Court's <coughs> ruling on it, I think, and if it's okay. found unconstitutional, then that means, you know, the higher rate that was being charged yep. would go back. Mm -hmm. That would mean we would have to refund, or would that, is that something we should be thinking it, of? Well, it, it basically, it was their money, is that, that's yeah. the part we're talking yeah. about. So therefore, if we're returning their money, it doesn't really affect our um, costs in any way because we're, we're running on the other percentages that we've been dictated. So therefore it would basically go backwards through payroll. Okay. If the people were no longer with us, we'd have to do the calculations and we would have to um, make other arrangements. I believe that you'll find that last Friday we sent out, and this is related to the uh, health trust, the latest money that came in back in March. That money has been returned to the employees through payroll and then also to the retirees and the non-current employees. So those checks went out on Friday. So um, it would basically be similar to okay. that. It's a cash flow issue. Yeah. Um, now, if the money has been deposited to the state, I would have to believe the state's going to have to get us the money back somehow so we can work it through. Okay. I'm just wondering. I do have one other thing. Um, we will be getting on to the agenda, um, the treasurer myself will be getting on the agenda for the 19th. Mm -hmm. We have uh, received a um, proposal from uh, Divine Millimet out of Concord. They've been reviewing our bonds. We had been approached them to refinance some bonds back six months ago and then the bond market went down. It's back up. And so we will be uh, looking at doing this. We're talking about calling uh, five million dollars worth of bonds and the potential aggregate budgetary savings is for four hundred twenty five thousand dollars. So um, the latest uh, sale that went out was favorable. Uh, we're working with them and we've already done a letter of intent and we'll be bringing information to you. I believe we're having a public hearing on that day to go ahead forward with this. Wonderful. Music to our ears. Absolutely. It's money. Director, thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Roman four appointments, number three. Chief Silver Fire Department Departmental Update. Good evening, sir. Good evening. <coughs> I generally start out with a review of our activity over the um, year-to-date period. Uh, since the beginning of the year, we have had two residential fires, 
five total fires within structures and an additional nine fires within vehicles or areas adjacent to buildings. I generally say that we haven't had any significant fires, but um, I guess I would qualify that as the homeowner probably feels that their fire is significant. <laughs> but um, when I make that reference, I mean there were no total losses. One of the things that I would point <coughs> out is that on two occasions, two outdoor fires uh, on outside decks were very likely caused as a result of improperly disposed of smoking materials. Mm -hmm. So for those folks at home that do smoke or use smoking materials, they need to be particularly careful, especially as uh, we're entering the drier part of the year in, s in the spring. Uh, there is still a lot of dry uh, brush uh, down and around. The wood of their porches and decks, the cans that they use to dispose of butts to make sure that they are fully out. Um, red plastic Folger cans are not appropriate <laughs> cigarette butt <laughs> disposal containers. The breakdown by district. 40.9% uh, or 233 fire runs this year have occurred in the Beach District. 49.2% or 280 have occurred within the Town District. 9.8% or 56 within the Rural District. The Rural District, again, it encompasses those areas where we do not have hydrants. So west of 95 or south of the Route 1 interchange are areas considered the Rural District. So for a total year-to-date, 569 fire-related or fire assist responses. Uh, again, this time of year, folks are looking to burn brush as part of the yard cleanups. Just a reminder that in the town of Hampton, anytime a fire is to be kindled, it does require a permit from the fire department. Uh, and there are some very specific rules governing outdoor burning in the state of New Hampshire. If anyone has any questions at home, please contact the fire department. Come by headquarters at 140 Winter Cunnett Road and we'll uh, give you copies of the guidelines and we'll uh, explain the process of obtaining a permit. There are no fees to obtain a burning permit. EMS calls year to April end. We've responded to 628 medical emergencies. That's an increase of 79 or 14 percent for the same period of time in 2013. Year to date we have had 105 occasions of simultaneous EMS calls or overlapping. What that means is that uh, an ambulance is out on a call and another call occurs before that ambulance is back in service. And those can be two or three overlapping calls occurring at the same time. During the summer, those can go as high as four or five overlapping calls at the same time. But of particular interest is the increase of 36 percent over last year for the same period of time. Generally, we do pretty well managing those with our own resources. When we don't have the personnel back, uh, we rely on mutual aid. Um, over, the uh, over the course of the year, generally, those mutual aid responses for what we provide and what we receive, they essentially balance out. Uh, it certainly drives the cost of our ambulance coverage, as every time a patient is transported, we do request that coverage to come back to staff an additional ambul ambulance for those subsequent calls. So you will see that reflected in some of the, uh, the financials for the first quarter of the year. Uh, our replacement ambulance is proceeding very well. It has arrived in Massachusetts last week. On Wednesday this week, I'll be driving to Minuteman Truck to do an inspection and uh, approve the lettering that will appear on the ambulance itself. Our aerial and ground ladders have all been inspected and all deficiencies have been repaired. Uh, we're conducting pump testing this month. Our first pumper left today. Uh, should be a pretty quick process, barring any unforeseen repairs that may be necessary. And that process should continue for the next several weeks. Um, update on the buildings. Um, technically, we are not concluded with the project. Uh, paving, or at least the binder coat on the precinct lot, has been laid down. The contractor is waiting for several consistently warm days to be able to put that final coat of asphalt down. Other than that, uh, we're pretty much about completed. Uh, Ekman has been uh, great to work with since we have moved in. We have had no major failures of any building components or systems. The few minor issues that we have had, they have been very quick to address on our behalf, uh, and, and it has not cost us anything. Um, I have reconciled our expenses and have accounted for every dollar spent on the new fire stations. I'll give you a, just a quick overview. I think it's important 
so that you understand how some of these, uh, how some of the funds were spent. The guaranteed maximum price paid to Ekman was five million thirty-six dollars seven hundred and thirty-one, five million thirty-six thousand seven hundred and thirty-one dollars. There were one hundred and fourteen, or roughly one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in change orders approved by the Board of Selectmen. The, uh, the largest portion of that was for the generator that we had installed at the beach. Um, two were unanticipated expenses, and that was additional asbestos removal from the beach station, totaling $19,000, and a rogue gasoline tank that we just had no idea was underneath the, uh, the precinct lot, and that expense for removal was $5,000. Architectural and engineering fees totaled 352,200, exactly right on budget. Material testing was 15,500, right on budget. Uh, reimbursements to the precinct for uh, lost revenue f over the last season for parking totaled $66,642. Uh, our owner expenses, which included things like furnishing equipment, uh, the dispatch uh, equipment, telephone expenses, the cost of um, moving the telephone systems, bringing in the services from Fairpoint, uh, cable television and electric services. Uh, additional existing building improvements, remember we retained a considerable portion of the Winnicott Road fire station, so there were improvements that were necessary there. Had to repair the diesel exhaust emission system there. Um, we had to replace a significant amount of insulation that just over the years had crumbled, fallen apart, rotted, or was um, moldy or mildewy. Uh, replacing some uh, drop ceilings like you see above your head. The ceilings are just in, in horrible condition. That uh, all-inclusive for all of those owner expenses totaled $138,135. Moving to be able to relocate all of the offices, administration, all the equipment um, from one station to another or to both, total $3,720. And then there were unanticipated, unbudgeted <coughs> costs that we were not aware of as we began uh, budgeting this, this uh, process. The cost of the bond was $20,000. The cost of title insurance was $5,500. And uh, legal expenses for outside counsel for the bond totaled just over $4,000. So all total expended um, I came within 0.01% of what the warrant article amount was. We've been able to maintain or continue to maintain our minimum staffing this year as we had last year, which is uh, certainly an a improvement over the previous few years where we had to reduce the daily staffing on occasion to accommodate limitations of funding. Um, this year we do have some challenges as, as we have had the following extended absences. We have a member on workers comp due to an on-duty fall since February 11th and is presently still out. We have had a member out due to an off-duty injury from March 2nd and continues to be out. However, um, he is progressing very well, but I expect his rehab to continue for the next few months. We have a member out since March 25th, uh, pending workers' comp. We had a firefighter on workers' comp for two weeks. He has returned. And we had a firefighter that, uh, due to an injury off-duty, was out sick for a period of four weeks. So these extended absences all affect the cost of coverage. As we um, try to maintain that minimum, we have to hire off-duty firefighters to fill those vacancies. So you may see that reflected in the first quarter numbers in our overtime lines. Uh, as the uh, finance director reported, we're expended at 25% for the first quarter and we're a little over 22% of our budget expended. Um, only about 1% more than last year. Last year for the same period of time, we we're at 21.68%. The reason why I bring this up is that as uh, Mr. Schwartz had noted, um, utilities are of a concern this year. In the default budget, we carry the same number for those expenses as last year, not what I had budgeted and proposed for the 2014 budget. Uh, for example, uh, electric, our current budget is $23,200. Uh, year to date, we have expended 44% of that. For the same period of time last year, we had expended 24%. 
Heating fuel, our budget is 18500 Year to date, we have expended 60%. For the same period of time last year, we had expended 39%. Water budget is $1,370. Year to date, we have expended 166% of our water budget, where in the previous year we had only expended 31%. So a little explanation on, on those, starting with water. The, uh, the significant change in the water bill is the cost for the fire service connections, because both buildings are now sprinkled where previously they were not. Mm -hmm. There is a quarterly fee that is associated with that main that comes into the building. So there's a considerable change on our water line. Heating fuel is not linear through the year because we spend more during the first quarter of the year because that's when the coldest period of time is. Of course, these first four months have been colder than usual over the, the past few years. So I equate a little bit of the increase in the heating fuel to that, but we're also heating two significantly larger buildings. There's a lot more square footage and the same holds true for the electrical expenses. In the new buildings, we have large air handlers that are electrically driven, and those air handlers push not only cooler air during the summer, but also the heated air throughout the buildings. So there's an increase in demand in the electric usage. Um, other than that, the rest of the lines in the budget are tracking pretty close. Uh, we'll just keep our eye on things as we go through, and I expect we'll conclude the year as, uh, as best we can. Under budget. Questions from the board? Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Um, Chief, you were mentioning a, uh, improper disposal of smoking material <coughs> regarding some of the uh, fires. Uh, how about, since we're getting into the warm season, the uh, charcoal grills and so forth on people's porches? Um, that's an excellent point. And um, we don't have jurisdiction over one or two family private dwellings. However, um, I'm sorry, over single family dwellings, over multiple family dwellings, and that would include condominiums. The state law prohibits the use of grills on or above the, the grade, which means the outside ground. So you're technically it's a violation of state fire code to use a gas grill on your deck. Mm -hmm. um, also, we recommend that if you're using grills, uh, maintain them in good condition. Check your con uh, connections to your propane cylinders. Check the gas valves, the burners and uh, try to utilize them a minimum of 10 feet away from any building or structure. And disposing of hot charcoal, because some of them are still using probably charcoal. Uh, any coals, mm -hmm. and, and even like during the winter, a lot of people will take the, uh, the hot coals and embers from their wood stoves, they'll shovel them into a bucket, and they'll mm -hmm. take them outside and dump them. Yeah, if you're dumping any of those coals, please make sure that they are fully extinguished. That means absolutely no heat, no smoke, no smoldering coming from them whatsoever. Right. Permit to uh, to conduct uh, open burning uh, only available at Station 1 on Winnicott Road? They could go to either station. Okay. I generally direct them to Winnicott Road because okay. there are a few areas that we permit out s outdoor burning in the Beach District. Okay. And the pumper tests, uh, does that include the 88 pumper? Yes. that That's scheduled to be tested and we're required to test it. Okay. Um, I, I believe it barely passed last year, right. so we'll see how it does this year. Final. May I have an email copy of your report and the conclusion of the building <coughs> uh, bond warrant article report? Absolutely, certainly. Very out outstanding, and I don't know anybody else that I can think of who could have done what you have accomplished on those stations. Absolutely remarkable. Thank you, Slickman. We'll see Slickman Griffin. Thank you for a comprehensive report. Thank You're you. Welcome. you. Slipping by. Yeah, and you, you see, you're still coming in at 25 percent. Yet your runs are up by how much? Uh, when you say coming in at 25 percent, you, you're talking about water. Well, we're right about my report was for the first quarter, so it was only for the first three months of the year. But your runs. Are but up. my my um, incident statistics were through the end of April. Okay. I use the um, I use the for budgeting purposes the quarter. Okay. Because that's the information that's available. As Mike had reported, he's reported through March and he'll be working on April. Okay. But I can give you, through the end of April, the, uh, the incident statistics. Your, your incidents are up for the last year. And they absolutely are, yes. You're still and coming in at a, yeah. at and 15 percent increase just on the EMS calls. Absolutely. And uh, as, we, uh, as we move forward towards, get towards the end of the year, uh, or for next year's budget, are we going to do anything with uh, 
some sort of communication between the beach and town, the door down there? So if somebody comes in and rings the bell and there's nobody there? It's installed. It is. It is completed, yes. It's beautiful. Yep. It's yes. What, a couple uh, people go down there and they said they couldn't get a hold of anybody. And it was always in the plan to have that installed as opposed to just having a local doorbell that rang at the station. We wanted to have a system where, because that station potentially could be unmanned when the mm -hmm. crew is out, yeah. that if, uh, if no one answered the door, then that communication could be responded to from the dispatch at Winnicott Road. Good. So the way it's uh, set up now, it's just a small little box with a speaker. You push the button, it rings through the line. The crew's in quarters. They answer the call. They come down and let them in. If they're out of quarters and there's no response, it then rings up to Winnicott Road. Yeah. The dispatcher can uh, communicate back to the individual, and we have a uh, strategically located camera so we can view the front of the station at all times, That's and we'll be able to see yeah. who's there. Yeah. That was the on only thing I had a couple of people come to me and say, oh, we went down to the beach station, but we couldn't get in. And so I think that's that's wonderful that you got that put in. Other than that, it's a great report. Good. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, great report. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Thank you. Sidebar. Sidebar, yes, sir. Um, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Chief, I'll, I'll give a synopsis of the floor. For, for your discussion mm -hmm. on the memorandum of agreement. Uh, there are two, uh, two contracts between uh, the Town of Hampton and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association, IAFF, Local 3017. Article 10 requires under that memorandum that firefighters or personnel reside within a 15-mile limit. The same is true for Article 9 under the Hampton Professional Firefighters Association. IAFF Local 2664. There is a 15 mile requirement that personnel must live that close to the town of Hampton. Chief, there is a, a, a movement uh, to increase that to 30 miles. The floor is yours. Uh, the, the concept of uh, modifying the residency requirement is one that has been discussed over the last 18 months. Um, what is presently proposed is modifying it to a 30 mile radius from uh, Winnicott Road Fire Station. I support the change. It has no negative impact on operations. It is essentially a neutral modification to the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, it does require um, some ratification by the board. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. I will so move to, appro to approve the sidebar proposed for both unions extending the residency limit to a 30-mile radius. Thank I'll second you. that. A second. Uh, discussion. Mr. Griffin. I'm not in favor of it, so I'm generally in favor of, <coughs> I'm definitely in favor of the fire department, but I'm just not comfortable with this. Thank you. Selectman Bridal. I'm all set. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. All set. Selectman Wilson, back to you. And select, uh, Selectman Welsh. Uh, Mr. Welsh, <laughs> you have, I'm sorry for the devotion. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Any comment? I support the chief. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Discussion has been heard. Effective this date, those that support the motion, all in favor? Four, four, one opposed. Select and group and opposed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. And thank you, Jill. Have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Roman for appointments. Number four, Diana Martin, Director of Recreation and Parks. Bid waiver request, Tuckfield Free Bay Garage and Lawn Mowing Services. Good evening, Director. Good evening. <coughs> we apologize for my appearance tonight. Did you win? We are winning, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we are winning, yep. Um, I am here tonight because, much to my dismay, I only got two bids back on both the garage and on the lawn mowing bids. So I'm hoping for a waiver on those or some sort of um, direction on what to do next. The Three Bay Garage has been out to bid three times now. And the two bidders that came in on this last bid were the two that have bid all three times. So I have um, Guyman Construction and Excel Construction. And Excel Construction actually came in a little bit under the price that we had for money. So I'm hoping that we can move forward with that. And the same goes with the lawn mowing bid. I had two bidders. One is uh, Professional Profiles, who we've used in the past. And the other one was JLG. JLG, yep. And um, they're a new bidder. They're a new, new company to us. But Professional Profiles was the one that was in within our price range. So 
so again. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. I, I don't have a problem with what they is in. Okay. Selectman Griffin? No. <coughs> I'm sorry to see that we didn't have more bidders. Um, I know Diana worked very hard this time at trying to trying to uh, get to some of the local bidders and uh, they didn't put in so um, I think uh, we need to move forward with this. Like she said, it's the third time it's, it's been here. We need to get this built and we need to get it done. So. Thank you, sir. I have no problem and obviously she has to get back to her game or they're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. And Mr. Welch, if you could just weigh in, please, in that uh, our actions tonight will uh, make this uh, procedure adhere to our purchasing policy or the policy. Well, Mr. Chairman, the Preparation Department has complied with the requirements in the, in the purchasing policy by notifying the members of the board prior to this meeting, indicating that there was less than the required number of bids. Uh, the bids received, this is the third go-round on the, on the garage, uh, and we've, we bid twice because we did not have two people, um, uh, three people, excuse me, and we still have only two. So, But the first bidder is within our price range and within the appropriation, and we should be able to get the work completed. The lawn mowing bid, we've been having a problem now for a couple of years trying to get three bidders and have not been successful at that, even though we do send out a, quite a number of bid require, requests to different companies. They're really not interested in working with us because they've already got a full docket. So I would recommend uh, what, what uh, Diana has uh, requested you to do. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. A motion. I'll, I'll make a motion. Oh. I'll make it the motion. For both uh, the garage yes. and the lawn mowing? Yeah. To wave. Motion to waive. Right. And wave and approve. Wave and approve the bidding process. Thank you. A second? I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Director. All right. Thank you. Roman 4, number 5, Ed Tinker, Assessor, 2013 Abatements. Good evening, sir. We presented with six abatements for this week's meeting. Um, all of them have recommended refunds totaling 2537.70. Um, there are 11 application, new applications remaining. Um, next week, I plan on presenting four um, to you that are, that are ready to go. Um, but uh, if you have any questions regarding these six, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. Wonderful. Thank you. Selectman. No denials? Not this week, no. Thank you. Selectman Griffin. No. They look, I took a good look at them, and they look to be in order. Thank you. Nope. Nothing. Nope. A motion. Move to accept. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Griffin. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have all the signed stuff we'll see read? Or oh. You have signed it all. Yeah. I mean, does read? Have, oh. Is this the? Yeah. Do you want to I take believe these are the. Take them? You might as well grab them up. Okay. I just want to let you know, too, just a couple more weeks of the requalifiers. We've got a, a probably less than 10 a week, but we have about two weeks worth, just so you don't have more than. And then we'll be done until late this year when we, mm -hmm. we're, we're actually doing quite a large amount of veteran requalifications. Yeah. But we'll wait till the you know near the end of the year to, okay. to start. Wonderful. Thank you. Has this I don't know if that's all of them, but I think it's all, it's all on this side. Okay. No, I think you got them all, Rusty. Yeah, I believe we're all set. Thank you, Mr. Tinker. Thank you. Thank you. Roman four, number six, J. Dina, Conservation Commission Chair. Sir. <coughs> <coughs> Green infrastructure project, rain gardens installed at the Lane Library. Good evening. Um, there are a number of different techniques that uh, residents can employ on their properties to help reduce flooding. Um, everything from dry wells to porous pavement for different features. One of them is rain gardens, which a lot of people are familiar with the term, but not familiar with exactly what it is or how to make a rain garden. So we've been awarded a uh, grant, <coughs> it's a non-finance grant, it's a support grant from Rockingham Planning Commission. We, the Hampton Conservation Commission, along with the Seaport Hamptons Estuary Alliance, are working with the Rockingham Planning Commission on this project to next Wednesday have a meeting at the Lane Memorial Library starting at 6.30. Um, and this is going to be an open discussion <coughs> about green infrastructure projects and rain gardens to explain what they are. The following Saturday, which is the 17th, starting at about 9 a.m., we're going to be doing a installation of a demonstration rain garden at the Lane Memorial Library. 
uh, with the approval of the library um, director and with the assistance of DPW and of the Hampton Garden Club. In conjunction with this project, we'd like to do a little bit of fundraising to cover the cost of the plants that we want to put into these gardens and the mulch that's going to go into the gardens and a little sign that we want to put up on the library lawn in front of these gardens that explain what they are. So we're here to ask for your permission to approach local businesses for that financial support. Um, our goal is to raise about $500, which should cover the cost of the plants and the mulch, the signs, and give us a little bit of cushion if we have to replace any of those plants. Um, so we hope you'll all come out to bring your shovels and help us install this demonstration garden. And, and again, I'm here to ask for your support to raise a little bit of money to help cover the costs of this. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Second. I have no problem with that. I'll so move. Great effort. Thank you. A second Is for the garden going to be inside the library or out? It's, I think outside would be better. <laughs> a second by Mr. Bridal for the discussion. Mr. Griffin? No. Thank you. Yeah. I'm voting. Uh, but, uh, let's, uh, Mr. Waddell, any comments? No, nothing. Fine. Sounds Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a motion uh, to support the initiative. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Roman 5, approval of minutes. I'll so move that we approve the minutes of April 21, 2014. A second. second. By Mr. Bridal. Any corrections? I need to go page by page. Seeing none. Seeing all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Yes. Roman 6, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, uh, before I get into my report, um, <coughs> last week we, uh, we gave permission to uh, the residents, the owner uh, and his engineer for uh, number 4 Northeast Lane to do some repairs to the seawall at that location. And he was going to attempt to use a crane. <laughs> and it turns out that that crane's going to be bigger than the Empire State Building in order to get over the top of his house to do the work. So um, I've asked him to please come this evening so that we can get this done so that he can get finished before the, the 15th of, of May and, and we can get this concluded. So, Gentlemen, please grab the table if you uh, so desire. Yep. We did get it extended from um, Google, right? Yeah, we, um, sorry. My name is Steve Oles from MSC Engineers. And we have uh, reached out to Chris Jacobs um, and have worked a route with uh, Chris Jacobs. And we have an approval from DES. And I have a plan here that I could like to pass out to show you which way we'd like to come in, if that's okay. Jay, you want to join us? Sure. This is the same route that was used when the construction of the retaining wall at um, oh, yeah. Mr. Hopel's property. Yeah. Uh, two lots down. Uh, it was going down the ancient, down to ancient highway, parking at the parking lot of the ancient highway, and walking down the beach um, to the front of the property, and basically using the excavator. Half a day in and out done. Uh, the excavator, the excavator is already lined up um, to do the work, and we can get it done before the 15th. And we'd like to have permission from the selectmen to commence work. Thank you. Selectman Wilson, questions? I, I have no problem. They've got to get it done. Thank you. Selectman Griffin? <coughs> no. Thank you. And you. Just remind me, did you, you, you all get done in a day? Is, is we could be done in a half a day, yes. Okay. I got no problem. Selectman Wilson? No problem. Conservation? Thank you. Just one question. I had no problem with the alternate access. Um, is the nature of the work itself going to be exactly the same as what you had proposed last week? That is correct. It's a matter we couldn't. Sure. Get over the building and everything else with the crane. No problem at all, Mr. Wonderful. Chairman. Thank you. And Mr. Welch, and lead us in a motion if, if uh, one was required. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I will have the conditional approval in writing tomorrow. So if someone wants to pick that up or give, give us an email address, just contact us in the morning and, and we'll be able to email it out to you. I'll provide you my business card as soon as we're done. Okay. Um, and that will require some insurance by the vendor going in and so forth. The, the vendor has already has his insurance card ready and okay. ready to go. Good. Sounds like we can get this started tomorrow. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that you make a motion to allow the owner of no number four, Norris Lane, to allow access through uh, Billy Joe Brown Park uh, on, Ocean, on Ancient Highway. Um, any material move there would have to be restored to its <coughs> place. And it will be under the supervision of the Department of Public Works and the Conservation Commission. Also yes, moved. By Selectman Woolsey, a second? Sure. By Mr. Bartle, all those in favor? Unanimous. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, we would like to thanks, say Chair. that uh, Christina, um, I, I think his friends has been very nice. Um, we bought the house and we didn't know that you know, we had all this stuff. Um, but Christina has been very helpful and very nice. Fred has been very helpful. And we just want to get it done and um, we're not trying to I just want to walk down on the beach. <laughs> uh, but I do, I do uh, Christina, uh, I do want to call her out. She's been wonderful and very helpful. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Chairman, um, I received a communication today from the uh, commander elect at the American Legion, inviting all of you to participate in the Memorial Day services if you're here and available. Uh, and just so. Everybody knows when those are because we'd like to see all of you there. Uh, there will be a uh, service at <coughs> the Beach Marine Memorial at 8 a.m. Uh, there will be a parade commencing at 11 a.m. in the parking lot behind this building. Um, it will move west on Winnicott Road to Route 1 and up Route 1 to High Street into the cemetery. Uh, certainly you're all invited. There are uh, refreshments to be served at the Hampton Academy School from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Uh, they'll be selling hot dogs and sodas and proceeds will go to uh, the American Legion programs. Um, the commander wanted to thank the board for uh, their kind reception last week. Uh, he was very impressed with the fact that uh, everything went just terrific and you paid him a number of compliments. So uh, I, will, I will be at the Beach Memorial at 8 o'clock in the morning as I am traditionally every year to celebrate. Um, there will be firearms training conducted by the police department. And uh, I just received this at uh, 4 o'clock today. Um, I just want to let everybody know because uh, sometimes the uh, range with the weather conditions being unfavorable are, are not very good. But they will be uh, doing outdoor range firing during the week of uh, uh, the 12th to the 18th uh, at the Public Works facility. So if you hear a loud popping noise, it's not your imagination. They're, they're actually down there completing their firearms training. Is this daytime firing, Fred? Uh, this is daytime. Nighttime will come later. <coughs> uh, we, we also have, and I, we, we've given to the board a list of, of mm -hmm. uh, yep. um, boards and committees with appointments that are expiring for this particular year. Uh, on the Cable TV Advisory Committee, we have a single appointment expiring this year. On the Energy Committee, we have two appointments expiring this year. On the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission, uh, we have one uh, appointment expiring this year. Uh, the board has a single appointment on the Highway Safety Committee expiring this year. We have, um, there are appointments, the recommendations will be coming from the library trustees. They have two alternates whose terms are expiring this year. The Leased Land Commission has one person who was expiring this year. His appointment's expiring, and he's only served one term so far. Um, the Mosquito Control Commission, we have an individual member whose term is up this year. The uh, Recycling and Education Committee, we have the entire committee. There are three members uh, with two, two current vacancies plus two alternates. Uh, for the Recreation Advisory Council, we have three positions open this year. So <coughs> we'll try to get these up on the website. And as normal, we would ask people to please send something in, whether it's an email, a letter, whatever, so that we can give it to the board expressing their desire to be appointed to one of these vacancies. We will <coughs> put it up on the, uh, on the website as soon as, as possible. The Household Hazardous Waste Day is May 17th from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. It will be at the old courthouse site on Wonderconnet Road. Uh, the flyer is up on the website. Please take a look at it because there are things if you bring them that have to be paid for. Not many, but there are some things. The board has received a, uh, you've received a draft warrant article from me for the purchase of a replacement fire engine uh, to replace current engine number four. We talked about that a few minutes ago. Uh, it barely passed its, uh, its pump test last year and, and we're concerned that it will not pass it this year. Um, there will be a meeting on Thursday that's this Thursday, May 8, 2013, at 6.30 p.m. in the Marston School with representatives from FEMA to address the draft FEMA flood map reports. The meeting is, open, is open to public officials. Uh, individuals may attend room, room um, is probably going to be at a minimum, but 
Uh, if you're an individual and you want to come and listen, that's fine. Public officials will be there. They're, they're RSVP'd and uh, they have the ability to ask questions and, and engage in conversations. Private citizens do not at this particular meeting, but there will be a meeting later for them. Mm. Work. Um, we heard the four, four Norris Lane. We don't have any other applications pending right now for uh, seawall repairs uh, that are ready to come to the board. The town will, ass um, will assume the cost of the street lighting on Nathaniel Court that is currently in a private name and has been so since before the street acceptance. We had a lot of trouble getting the street accepted and uh, we switched back, back and forth with private names uh, in order to keep the street light on. Um, we're discontinuing 12 street lights this year because of various constructions around the town and they're being picked up by private people. So even adding this to the street light list will still have a net decrease in the total appropriation. So, and this one goes back now, I think it's six years. So it's, it's, it's been around for a while. We currently have three outstanding bills uh, that have been sent out by the town. Two of these are in the leased land program. Uh, these two have until May 15th to provide payment in full. They've all been given prior warnings. Uh, we would request the board's permission to automatically institute legal proceedings after that date if they are not paid. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a second bill which is um, for the use of town property for an addition on a building which has been going on for many, many years. It's very small, uh, but we're also, uh, we've also sent a demand letter to them. The total amount outstanding, and this is for all leased land, is $10,837.13. So we've managed to narrow this down to a fairly small sum, uh, I believe, and Rick, you were on the board at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, when we first started doing this, we had a couple of hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. that were overdue yeah. uh, when we first started doing this. So we've gotten it down pretty close to just two or three people who regularly do not pay. So. Good job. With your permission, we'd like permission to take these people automatically to court through council. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. I'll second. And the motion is? That we, al we allow the... Post May 15th? Is post May 15th, we, post allow, May 15th. we mm -hmm. allow the town manager to proceed... Oh, town council. Town council to proceed further with legal proceedings against... Uh, to collect this debt. Right. The second? I did. A second. All those in favor? Thank you. The motion by Bridal, the second by Woolsey, unanimous. Sir. That's it, sir. Thank uh, you. We're hoping to get the um, church, uh, the church Street station as you, uh, as you take a drive down. It looks I very nice. It does look really nice. They're, they're doing a great job. Uh, there will be paving on the driveway around the building. The whole parking lot will not be paved, but the area around the building will be okay. for intake of large trucks and so forth. Um, they're doing a very good job in cleaning up the parking lot, and that should be open relatively soon. Thank you, sir. Select Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, bathroom, Church Street, help. Um, we've decided not to have a bathroom, but we've decided also not to have the help. Uh, <laughs> it's on the dock of the, the, uh, the director's taking care of it. He has he's approached uh, all the agencies that are necessary to keep it going and get it done before we open that facility. I have a tendency to nag. That's okay. That's um, all right. It keeps us on the ball. Well, will Memorial Day schedule be online, do you know, on cable so people can see that? You know, I don't know. Uh, we have uh, the sketchy one that we were sent uh -huh. in writing, uh, and we'll put that up. I just thought it might um, be nice if people are, are looking because they don't yeah. always read the paper or watch. Well, that's the true. Um, Mary Batchelder. Residents I are complaining to me. And they said, Mr. Welch told us that there would be no more big trucks on Mary Batchelder Road. Why are there big trucks on Mary Batchelder? Well, I think the answer to that question is... They've been listening to you. Yeah, well, I think the answer to that question is I've had the police department over there stopping them. And um, what's happened here is the people who put out these uh, quest programs for directing mm -hmm. vehicles mm -hmm. uh, apparently have that as a shortcut. Mm -hmm. to get to Toll Farm Road. We've requested that they remove it. We've requested the truckers not to come that way. And apparently mm -hmm. it appears what we have to do is we have to start giving citations. Oh, bless you. Many citations. Uh, I can't order that. The chief can, but... Yes. Uh, yeah. it, it is posted. It is posted that and it's posted and all accesses to that point. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. I will. I will chat. Tomorrow. I had, you know, Mr. Welch told us. Yeah, I have had no calls. Trucks would be gone. I've had no calls at all. Oh, I'm so. getting. Okay. They're watching you. Please direct them to me so that right, well. if we get calls in the office, we respond right away to the police department. All right. <coughs> um, the uh, the um, article in the Hampton Union request to withdraw from waste disposal contracts undecided because our our uh, intent to get out of the solid waste district. Any right. update on that? No. Uh, we we uh, we did present in January uh, they, they they have an excuse that uh, they got it the day after they issued the meeting notice yeah right and I suggested they issue a different meeting notice but they of course didn't do that um, you didn't tell them what to do with the meeting notice. Uh, well I think they got the idea um, they posted it for uh, the meeting the other night and of course they only meet quarterly um, and uh, they hired a new town attorney or a new district attorney who is going to review this and have a motion ready for the next meeting to withdraw. The town of Southampton is also yes. attempting to yep. withdraw. Yep. Of course, they're less than 1% of the district, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a very small amount. It helps, though. It does. It does help. Um, mm -hmm. We should have some information before the June 11th meeting as to what actually is going to happen here and what the motion is going to be. Okay. So we're still on it. Oh, very much. What happened to my duck signs and the no through trucking signs? Well, the duck signs should be up. I, mean, I had somebody. Geese. I had somebody in my office two and a half weeks ago saying, "What do you want those?" And I told them. And I said, "I asked them to please call you and verify it." <coughs> and those no through trucking signs that we approved last year to be re. And stated, I know Public Works is overwhelmed. I understand. Well, I don't think they've got them all in yet, yet those, either, but they are putting some up. Those signs are important. Yeah. I'm watching those ducks. I'm watching those Canada geese. Well, the geese are not ducks. Well, they're. I, I wouldn't want my car water, to tackle with a Canadian fowl. goose, I want to tell you. So I'm just, uh, I'm just putting in a plea. And finally, before I bore you to death, November 5th, Mike Gingras, um, alternative waste disposal of bulky items. Remember that? Mm -hmm. um, stuffed chairs, couches, mattresses, other bulky items, et cetera. And it was my understanding that Public Works is checking into that and that we had a sample roll-off to start disposing of those. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bean, I know, is passionate about this as well since he helped to increase the fee to dispose of these bulky items, which we don't want to include in our tipping fees. I believe so. that they have received the roll-off. All right. And that they, it's a, I, I, my recollection, my recollection, is that it's in excess of 40 yards, so it's a pretty big roll-off. Okay. And we're going to keep track of? They're going to keep track of filling it. They're going to keep track of shipping it, um, keep track of cost, weight, uh, how long it takes to ship, and et cetera, et cetera, okay. and get us back a report how after they've done two or three it? of these. Yeah. So we g will get a report? We will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. <coughs> um, good report. Very uh, yeah, sir. interesting. Um, I just wanted to state that I am, um, for the Hampton Beach Area Commission, I am interested in continuing with that. I think that's wonderful. Possible. Thank you. Representing the town of Hampton. And does is that, is that come from our board? Uh, yes. That recommendation? Is that I have the two year term. John Nyan has the. When is it appropriate to make term. that motion? And it's time. next scheduled meeting, probably. The, do we make a, a motion from this board to elect you to the board, or do they? No. We do? Here. It? Yeah, it's here. Okay, I'll, I'll make the motion that Mr. Griffin continue for uh, the, his next reenlistment. I'll second that. Second by Mr. Bridal. All those in favor? I'm going to abstain. Okay, four, uh, zero, one, abstention, Wolsey. Thank you. What else do you have, thank sir? Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thanks. Excellent report. All set. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. I'm all set. Wonderful job. Thank you, sir. Mr. Welch, great job. Sir. Thank you, sir. Roman 8, new business. Ms. Wolsey. Nothing at the moment. Thank you, sir. Mr. Griffin. No. Thank you very no, much. Thanks. No. Uh, Roman 9, closing comments. Roman 10, a German and public meeting. Southern Wolsey. I will move. We're going to shock everybody. I will move <coughs> that we adjourn at 8.04 p.m. Second. Mr. Bridal, unanimous. Five zip. Thank you. I have one piece of paper left to sign. That's the uh, sidebar agreement.